Before the Q6 e-tron eagerly awaited across Germany, Austria, Switzerland can even make its claim, it has to face a big question, unfortunately, because of the delay that is, why so late? There are only two possible answers to that specific question. It's either too late or it's so exceptionally good, it can't be considered late at all. We're taking a close look at it today. It's in a way the Porsche Macan offshoot, or the Macan is the offshoot of it, regardless of how you view it. It's actually the same platform, the truly fabulous PPE platform. What it can really do, what this specific car can't do, you will certainly find out right here on the only dedicated channel for electric mobility without wearing any rose-colored glasses. That's how it looks. Who are the competitors? Not every premium manufacturer has one. For instance, BMW doesn't really have an actual direct competitor to it, quite frankly. Mercedes has the Mercedes EQE, but for instance, doesn't have an 800 volt system. Yes, that's going to be interesting. Then you have Chinese manufacturers like Chopeng, for instance, with an 800 volt system which could pose a threat in terms of charging capacity, but might not shine as much in other categories. So that's quite interesting. Many of these cars, of course, you'll find on EVM. Logically, more than 8,000 vehicles are now back in stock. Recently, it was about 7,200. Now it surged back over 8,000 cars, and all of you are welcome to take a closer look around. Simply, filter by categories as you wish, and then you'll find what you're looking for. And now we are taking a much closer look at the Audi Q6 e-tron. And if you find it as incredibly awesome as we do, then simply go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm really happy about that, so let's get started. Welcome to Carmanic. You'll decide at the end of the video whether he's too late or too good to be too late. I'm leaning towards one side already, so until now I actually thought the car was just too late. Audi's been a bit sleepy on electric mobility lately, even though they were really on the ball with the e-tron back in, say, 2019 also demonstrated that they were ahead of Mercedes back then compared to the EQC because the e-tron just had better charging capabilities. Featured air suspension, so features like that which just made it a bit more luxurious. And then there was this moment of falling asleep. But now, looking at it and considering the data, I'd say that Audi actually managed to hit the right moment to not be too late because quite a few competitors are still actively betting on the outdated 400 volt technology. Here, discussing the 800 volt technology, just unveiled the Porsche Macan, same platform, PPE. However, the data are not identical. It's important for us to understand that. Let's start with these data. You can take a visual look at the car in the meantime. After that, we will also go take a look at the trunk right here. That's actually a very important point to consider too. With this car size, I particularly think of Francesco, a diehard Audi fanboy who has certain criteria regarding both range and power. His four rings he deeply wants, plus the spacious and comfortable area a growing family absolutely needs. Not every car of this size offers the space one actually needs with a child or two children, or as I sometimes wish for him, with four kids, just quadruplets all at once. Well, it'd be too small for that, but we'll do the family check first before the data. So, the Q6 e-tron model will initially be available in two distinct versions. These are exclusively all-wheel drive versions, so the Q6 e-tron Quattro and the SQ6. Quattro. Um, speaking of which, for the smaller version, 285 kilowattus, which when converted is around 300 some horsepower. That is indeed ancient currency. You do not want that anymore, certainly. And the S variant comes with a power output of 360 kilowatt. The funny thing is, it's not conceived in the same structure as back in the day with the original e-tron, which eventually came out as the e-tron S. It notably featured three motors. Yes, indeed. And those were distinct and different motors with three instead of merely two. Yet in both of the all wheel drive versions, they're precisely the exact same motors. Just consider it slightly like coming from the traditional combustion engine world with even significantly more power being released. So to articulate, we have an asynchronous machine at the front, a PSM at the back. So a permanent magnet at the back, asynchronous at the front. And that's the case for both versions. The smaller one accelerates from 0 to 100 in 5.9 seconds, that is the 285 kilowatt version. And the S model achieves it in just 4.3 seconds. So if it boasts 360 kilowatt, exactly how much is that in horsepower? I believe that's roughly 490 horsepower. Audi specifically mentions there approximately 30% more efficient, they say. And above all, they possess significantly more power and are even noticeably lighter, providing a key advantage. Of course, that's the perfect recipe to make a car efficient, to make it powerful. But we do notice that weight plays a role again here due to the large high voltage battery. Because if we now compare this to a standard car just because of the weight, not at all, not the specific designated class, but Smart Hashtag 3, for instance, in the Brabus variant, 430 horsepower, so significantly less than the S version of the Q6. 
it accelerates from zero to 100 in 3.7 seconds, whereas this one takes 4.3, because somehow you just can't hide the weight. It weighs 2.35 tons, that's 2,350 kilos between the S and the non-S, there's just a 25 kilo difference in weight, so it's hardly significant. So, it's not too heavy, but certainly not a lightweight either. But it's also 4.77 meters long, the good one. Now, it gets quite interesting as we're about to talk about trunk volume and what you can expect there. Particularly, the issue concerning the front trunk, or frunk, has consistently been an ongoing problem with the MEB platform, to which the Q4 e-tron is also directly connected. Just like with the ID4 and ID5 models, where you simply didn't get to have a front trunk at all. That changes here. Thankfully, it'll please many. You can go up to 21 inches on the tires. This here is now an S-line. You can choose whether you want a black package or specifically for the S, this gray. So when you choose S models at Audi, they always come with a gray background. So like the mirror cap, for example, the window framing, or here at the front, this entire blade. It's then in uh, gray, so to speak, but you can also have it in black. I welcome that development because when I previously drove the e-tron model, I really didn't like it. That was S-Line as well, indeed. The e-tron sport back in blue S-Line, but with those gray inlays, and honestly, I just didn't like that at all, really. I was considering all along to buy it in black. The problem with a leased car, of course, is that you have to revert it back, costing a fortune. Here, you have the option to simply choose to get it in black, really. Here, we see these sophisticated headlights, quite slim indeed. With this animated digital active graphic, which naturally comes in various... Graphics is adjustable. That means if you now say, I don't like it this way, but I want it different, then you can adjust that in the car. Let me show you how beautifully delicate the turn signal is. Someone mentioned it a long time ago, and I too find it really interesting to see how a car blinks. Light is very important to me personally. In a car, because it greatly affects the appearance. You know. And on the camera, it doesn't look as delicate as it does to the naked eye. Here we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 13 particularly small elements present, which, as one would naturally expect, also illuminate in a dynamic fashion. I think it's very nice. So these headlights look very chic, although headlights are somewhat relative. That, in fact, is merely the daytime running light, not the actual headlight. Is it the bottom? Yes. That means, of course, naturally. Um, you've got matrix LED as well. Has it turned off? No. So here's the headlight, like the Mackin, and up here, the daytime running light. The fully closed grille, the brand new Audi logo, indeed, that's all part of the story. And then, while we're here at the front, let's check out Frank before we move on to the main part, which, as buyers of this car are interested in, is the trunk. Frank holds 64 liters, which is very good to start with. Uh, however, you have to click again, just like this, click, gas springs, very nice. And then we've got a rather large Frank here, so he's definitely not small. In this container, place various items, since it's made of durable plastic, Put in dirty or wet items without worry. I am thinking, for instance, of tennis players who quite obviously would not want to bring the tennis sand into the passenger compartment of their vehicle, or perhaps even golf players, or what else, honestly, I do not really know at all. Things you might do, or possibly mud runners, I really don't know. You can quite nicely put it all in here. It doesn't make fabric dirty. Instead, it tends to soil plastics more, or you could even effortlessly fit a juice booster in this space. You won't really need the large one in this particular case because, and I'm going to share this in advance, concerning charging. The large one can handle 22 kilobytes, the smaller Juice Booster 3R, which you can also use as a wall box. Both serve as a wall box, but the smaller is more convenient. It only has an output of 11 kilo dollars, and honestly, that should be more than sufficient for you since, as it stands, this car currently can only charge at an 11 kilo dollars AC station. I probably should have packed it a bit more. So, 11 kilo dollars AC, that's of course somewhat painful for quite a few people, considering this particular battery size we're now talking about. That's approximately, yes, around 100 kilowatt hours in total, gross with 94.8 net, are available for your personal usage. That's a particularly big battery, which is quite good. If the car proves to be efficient, then you can truly achieve fairly adequate and respectable highway ranges with it. Urban, of course, since electric cars are especially efficient in the city. But if you have such a big battery and you're out on an appointment, which happens to me often, even with a very large battery, and I don't have this feature, unfortunately, because I missed it, then you would really appreciate having an AC function. With 22 kilo hours, because then such a battery, now I can't open it, then such a battery, you can open it from the inside, would be fully charged in just under five hours. It's great for short hotel stays, because you say, okay, I've just arrived, it's already late, I'll plug it into the charging station, 
urban ones work, voila, in, and then you can ultimately, you can recharge very quickly, effortlessly choose either the left or right charging flap to open first, like the left, swiftly open it, and then without any hassle or difficulty, you also have the convenient option to open the right one as well. Looks really nice and elegant the way it unfolds. Thankfully, we don't have any ugly rubber nubs that you need to pull out and wrestle with, but rather a simple flip cover. I find that very attractive. But as mentioned, only 11 kilo AC. You can charge AC on both sides. I'll turn the car around for you. It's very convenient because depending on where the charging station is or where you are or where there's a charging option at the vacation home or where your wall box is, maybe you had a different car before, which, so to speak, had the wall box in a different place. And this way, you can act better if you have an AC connection on both sides. That's actually quite cool indeed. DC charged extremely quickly, yet then moved rather swiftly through the left side. That means if you go to the fast charging station, you back up to it and plug in on your driver's side. 22 kilo is also coming later in the life cycle, but that's no different with the Porsche Macan. It's available the same battery size, but only with 11 kilo dollars at the moment. It feels a bit wasted when you think about it, especially since we were just talking about the smart hashtag one or three or whatever. Even cars with smaller batteries, which are almost 40% smaller in some cases, have 22 kilo dollar charging options. And that really helps. You wouldn't believe how useful that can often be in everyday life. Not at home, no. There you tend to charge comfortably via the wall box. Doesn't even have to be 11 kilo hours if you're charging overnight or over the weekend. Many often overestimate that, but if you always come along, then I'd be turning it completely in vain. So stand still for a moment yourself. Now this is the side where you only have AC and on the other side you have both AC and DC. So here you can choose on which side you charge at a slower pace. It's also good because for instance, when you stop in the city, I often see cars that only have the plug on the other side. They then pull the cable over the car and such cables get dirty from the ground. And as a result, you get these little pebbles on it or grime and dragging that across the paintwork is just extremely unpleasant. But you don't have another choice. Here though, because you simply plug it in right here. By the way, while we're on the topic of charging, be smart and use the unlocked interface that Audi offers. Not everyone offers that. For instance, I can't use that with my Mercedes, unfortunately. And this is actually the dedicated interface to IONT. It's really a specialized provider where you can conveniently book an electricity tariff. And so in this way, you get your electricity supplied directly from IONT. And the longer you allow the car to charge via the app, you have to indicate, okay, I'm plugging it in now and it will charge until 8 a.m. tomorrow. Now it's 5 p.m. the evening before, then IONT knows, okay, we now have, I don't know, 15 hours. And the longer the time, the better they can with their trading procedure, where they buy and sell electricity in 15 minute intervals. They can ensure that your electricity becomes cheaper. That means by implication, you have an electricity rate that is, for example, I don't know, 30 cents per kilowatt hour flat rate. And then for charging the electric car, 10 cents less per kilowatt hour. That means you would then charge the car at home with your IONT rate at 20 cents per kilowatt hour. I, even at the age of 19, since for me, IONT costs 29 cents per each kilowatt hour. That doesn't apply to home electricity, just the car, but always for charging 10 cents per kilowatt hour. That adds up to quite a bit over the year. I'll link it for you down in the description box where you can also get one of those, perform a thorough home inspection specifically to see how much the surge would cost you through IONT. And it's actually quite a handy thing. So. Then we've basically already reached the rear. Here, I have a very impressive message. It's moving down here because many electric vehicle users, since the situation we were trapped in around 2020 to 2022, have behaved very well in the past few years. It's become important to pull something. That was like the only escape, yeah. To head out, to venture somewhere into nature with something attached. For example, a caravan. Many electric cars still struggle with this reality. I just now, I really have to carefully ponder whether the embargo was indeed before expiring on that. Yes, exactly. The EQV that I just tested. So the electric V-Class, a huge piece. The combustion engine version tows two and a half tons. The electric tows nothing at all. And that naturally makes it difficult to sway people, especially into the van or SUV sector, when you tell them, sure, you'll get far and whatever, but then you can't tow anything. Not even a measly garden trailer. That's obviously dumb. Here, it's different. The little one. With 285 kilo dollars and the all-wheel drive can tow two tons and the S version can tow 2.4 tons. That should be ample. It's even almost on par with the much bigger BMW iX and the significantly larger Kia EV9, which are all around five meters or even more in length. 
That's great. Audi did a really good job there. I have to say that at this point, because it simply resonates better with enthusiasts. There are coming, as I mentioned, two rear wheel drive variants. I'm not even sure if I said it. Two more rear wheel drives are coming. And then with the rear wheel drive, you can choose whether you want a small battery or the large one like you have here. If you opt for the rear variant with the large battery, naturally, you'll have the most range, even more than with the all wheel version. Or you say, no, the rear is enough for me. I really don't want to spend that much money at all. The rear wheel drive equipped with a small battery that's approximately 83 kilowatt on gross and around 79 kilowatt on net. So I'd likely choose to go for the slightly larger battery option just to fully ensure the replacement of a conventional engine. Here, as I've already shown you on the Spy Islands with the camouflaged one, there is such an active rear light. This means it illuminates and if you approach, it warns, not actually meant for pedestrians, but rather if you get closer with a car, sensors detect this and change the rear light graphic. For instance, the light's good, you know, some fiddle with their phone at the light, and when you slightly ease off the brake, automatic cars begin to roll, probably what it's for, that it changes the display and you notice, whoops, there's something in red, has changed within your peripheral vision so that you might be alerted not to crash into the beauty in front of you. So, we do have rear windshield wipers, which will please many. I'm not a fan of rear windshield wipers as they just spread the muck around, but for better rear visibility, it's beneficial. And then, in addition to the 64 liters up front, we expect you here with a trunk volume of 526 liters. That's how it seems to be. You know, I consistently do the thorough plastic check. How does a car maker work meticulously with so many different materials? We've got carpets all over this place here. Except here. Here they opted for the BMW route, just utilizing extremely rough plastic. I always say, and perhaps it'll catch on someday, just use that little trick, dear manufacturers. Thus, I won't need to say, for instance, that these particular crossbars, even if they're simply just made of foil. The metallic appearance genuinely and drastically enhances this edge to a significantly greater extent. Yes, I know it's a loading edge, but I also don't drag suitcases wildly over mine because I don't want to scratch the plastic either. So I definitely won't do it when I have these metal things here. If we lift this now, we will have a decent, decent amount of space, specifically for a Type 2 cable, or if perhaps you say, I want my juice booster right in the back, then you can certainly tuck it in there comfortably. I'd almost dare to venture a guess and say we might very well fit the rather large number two in here, or you know your type two cable or whatever. So there's definitely space for that, no doubt. Then we have a tire repair kit available. Two, storage options are present in the back again. I think that's pretty good too. For instance, I always put, and I find it annoying when a car doesn't have it because it just rolls around in the trunk. Here, for example, I always place my queasy sets, my cleaning kit, my dry wash wand, wheel cleaner, bug remover. Everything fits perfectly right here in the end, you see, and it doesn't ever fall out simply because this edge is actually quite remarkably high. I find that really great because then it doesn't shuffle around here. I'll take the curve dynamically, then it flies. So often in my EQS, this is tossed out because this part isn't so high for me. Here, definitely, I think that's really good. So you've already got a place where you can put your Quisica Maniac, if you're up for it. Just take a look at Queasy DE, then you can also clean it up nice and neat on your property without water with the dry wash wonder. And then right here we have this particular blind which you can quite easily pull out and it effectively serves, so to speak, as a truly useful parcel shelf for storage. 526 plus 64 liters. This indeed actually makes it, if I have calculated correctly, almost very close to approximately 590 liters. 64 plus, what exactly did I mention, say once more? 64 plus the sum of 26. Exactly, that calculation precisely places us directly right at the total of 90. That's right, 590 liters of trunk space, that's very good for this vehicle size. Can't really complain about that. So the family vacation should have no obstacles in its way. Now we're moving on to the beautiful part. For that, I'm turning it back into position. Because now comes the moment. You all know me as a maximalist. If ever I have the choice, I'd go for a car named Q8 or Q6, I truly would. So long as it perfectly fits my possibilities allow, you should always opt for either a Q8 or an EQS instead of an EQE and so on and so forth. Here I would really think hard because Audi has done something important. Finally updated this ancient cockpit and did so very, very efficiently and beautifully. And this raises the question whether to go for the Q8 e-tron, the current one, which was also updated not too long ago, but still comes equipped with the old cockpit design, or whether to opt for a PPE-based model. Skips the Q6 and in return gets a super, super modern interior with some outstanding features like I've genuinely never seen in any other car before. I'll show you that right now. 
off we go into the interior. Come along. Let's start with the seats. Check these out. I believe it's a great combo. These are entirely recycled fibers, you see. And it's not just this particular seat, though. There's also synthetic leather or real genuine Nappa leather available for customers who don't want to make any compromises. But here you can see it's synthetic leather, or as it's called nowadays, vegan leather. Those who don't like it can opt for Nappa leather. But there are many people who say they prefer a fabric interior because it gets too warm. In the summer and too cold in the winter with leather. However, it's important to note that every electric vehicle on the market comes equipped with a built-in preconditioning feature. I really like the door, especially with this fabric here. Even if it's not leather, I think it's nice. Here's another element I'll show you inside in a moment. But you know my plastic check. See, everything here, this is hard plastic. By now, we probably have to get used to it. Pretty much every manufacturer does it, except the Lotus e Letra. There was certainly another car there. Can you possibly recall which model it was? I can't, sadly. I could perhaps use something else, maybe. Where this was leathered, or rather perhaps just a somewhat soft material would suffice. So here, everything is very, very nice. I also really like this edginess with the door handle, with the positioning, Bang and Olufsen. This down here, I don't like it anymore. So now I'm getting in, and then we'll take a look at this completely new interior. It has certainly been a very long time overdue, dear friends. Let's roll down the windows, shall we, to cool it off just a tiny little bit here, shall we? Seat down too. By the way, this is the lowest seat position. I am 6'2", and I have clearly more than a fist space here. A gigantic head-up display in front of me, which I can now show you as well. Take a look at this. This is what it looks like. It's really, really big. And funnily enough, you can also, if it comes to mind later, equip it with games for the loading screen, quite uniquely through the head-up display. But before we dive into the interior, prices, haven't mentioned those yet. What's the absolute minimum cost of actually owning this car, or even calculating the leasing rate based upon the given price? Well, it's just under 74,000, not just under, but 74,000. 700 euros for the 285 kilowatt version with all-wheel drive, and if you want the S version, it's 93,800 euros. So it's basically a difference of about 19,000 euros. That's quite steep, so some will definitely think twice about whether they need it. Well, I can answer that for you, not emotionally, of course, but yes, indeed. It's obviously quite thrilling with 490 horsepower. The smaller one reaches a top speed of 210 km h, the larger one 230. I also think it's great they let it exceed 200 and didn't cap at 200, because with so much engine power, you eventually have to question the point of it all. All right, by the way, the drag coefficient is 0.28. If you're wondering how it achieves that with such a nearly steep windshield and all that space above, 0.28. It's a bit much, isn't it? Indeed. So, I mean, the e-tron, it has 0 0.26, 0 0.24, the e-tron. So the original e-tron as a sportback. So we have to see how that naturally affects the consumption. So I told you guys I like this. Now I want to show you this. This is a unique and fascinating control element, which I truly enjoy and appreciate. Firstly, we still retain the manual adjustment feature for our vehicle mirrors. Thank you for that. And then the light settings, not adjusted here where we usually have it in the car, but here instead. And there, you can choose between the different lighting things here and turn them on and off. Here you have seat memory and the locking of the rear doors, so as a child lock feature. I find that very, very cool. Also nice with piano black finish, but it really enhances this part as well. I think this control unit is totally awesome. Okay, before Francesco's arm falls off, the new steering wheel. Looks super chic, feels incredibly good. We might not have a leather hub in the middle, but it's not completely hard with the beautiful Audi logo. Right here, we have a new texture presented. These are, let's see, indeed tactile buttons that we are currently exploring. Thank you for this as well. Here you can actually see, for example, on the left side, a remarkable thing. Then you can go up and down. Long-term memory, short-term memory, it's all on offer here. And then over here to the right, you can also choose mobile phone, navigation, radio, so media. Set it as you like, display a large speedometer. That's exactly 12 inches. These objects right here in front of us are precisely measured to be 14.5 inches. This particular measurement is of key importance as it symbolically signifies the very moment we were finally able to surpass the previous records that have been established. So to replace the existing Audi system, I'm looking at this dual screen setup, which was indeed beautiful at the beginning. By now, since 2019 or 2018, that's already six years during which Audi hasn't done anything in the interior. We had this particular screen here, which is relatively small by now and also completely outdated with a handling. And then down here, another one for the climate, the climate screen. I think this is much nicer, really nice and big. That's how it should be. And take a look at this navigation display. We have traffic data everywhere, even when the navigation isn't active. 
And where Audi really listened well was in doing it like Mercedes and Porsche, showing how many out of how many charging stations nearby are available. Which means if I'm driving here on the A9, I can see on my right, oh, look, there's a 300 kilowatt charger. It has four ports, but only one is available. Then you can check here. And what happens if I press it? Then you'll see it right away. Let's see. In 750 meters, three minutes. Your battery level, then what's available. One out of two free, status not available for the 300 kilodollar charger. So this is how it looks. And then you have here, there's also a new Ionity Park in Garching. Where are we now? We're now in, we're actually in Ingolstadt, goodness gracious. We really need to travel a little bit further down towards the small town of Minge. And over in the vicinity of Garching, there seem to be a few new Ionity charging stations, but it appears they haven't been marked on this map yet. Could that be? They're actually by the BMW press office, aren't they? And then you can, well, charge per kilowatt hour for 49 cents if you have the Ionity passport. For vacation, say, if you don't drive long distances, after one month you can then proceed to cancel it. Clear? Yes or no? I wouldn't really say that. I mean, it's not bad. It doesn't bother me if we zoom in on Landshut. We also have a relatively quick setup. It's in 3D view after all. Here, for example, you can see the historic church. Yes, go ahead and take a look. So it really works well when I want to zoom in like this and then move over. It's handy if you're moving and hit road closures, quickly check, okay, next exit. That's key. You look here, think, oh, can I take this exit? How do I get around this section of the highway? Ah, that's too much for me. No, then I'll stay on the highway. That's why it's vital for a map to work quickly and efficiently. How can I assist you? Navigate me to Ambleham 1 Java. With this new system, I'm obviously extremely curious about how the route planning looks. Oh, I don't even need to tap on it at all, you know. Okay, zap. Just how fast does this entire process actually go? So we could start driving already because we now know navigation is already active. He's calculating here, still calculating now. So we could have already been on our way. What's going on now? I don't even know. A stop from Ingolstadt to Ambleham, one Ewe, that's... 739 kilometers and it only lets us charge once for 29 minutes precisely at a lego in homburg on the 300 kilobala station that sounds pretty good right well i actually expected more charging stops but hey we've got a large battery super fast recharging speed here see for example a parking space in 10 kilo that's good because sometimes when kids are crying and you really wouldn't want to stop but of course you do want to stop for the child then you see, oh wait, there's also a 350 kilowatt of charger here. Then I can start charging right here. For instance, if you still have 30% or whatever. Here we've got these shortcuts. They're totally new, so it's a whole new life together. Here in this view, we observe the comprehensive charging menu, where we're fully capable of setting the desired charging endpoint, such as, for instance, for our home. If you say, I aim to charge up to 50% for daily use, or it's always recommended to charge up to 80% or for long distance. Battery temperature, really cool that it's shown. 23 degrees, perfect. That's a critical indicator to know, can I now charge my device rapidly or is it not possible? Then open the charging port, I've shown you that before. You can choose any option you like. It helpfully shows which is which, just in case you forgot. You can set departure times for fast charging. To charge faster, look for a charging stop. And here, charging spots, you can create some. Then we have this symbol here. Then, for instance, you can go to this display here. That's the head-up display. Naturally, you can adjust height, control brightness, blah, 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 and precisely set screen contents. However, you have the option to also switch off the head-up display, just as you can with the various other displays present. Been there. Here, what's this? These are the radio stations, so the DAB. Back to the navigation system. It really reminds you of Porsche in its layout. You can then flip it up. And then off you go. I find it quite nice. Let's have a look and see how this will accurately demonstrate the charging stop to us as we move away from the map here. It takes a moment. Here, this is our charging stop. So if you drive faster, this radius will naturally decrease and then it recalculates your route, of course. What I'm curious about now, what kind of filter options do we actually have? So how exactly do we get to the electric charging station? Oh, look, there it is. Very nice indeed, Audi. Very nice indeed. Thank you. Well, you can actually set it, not in kilometers, but in percent. Far more important, I want to arrive at the hotel with 4% because I can charge there. At my holiday home or the holiday house. For the charging stations, let's plan. Because for instance, when you're abroad and might not use Ionity, we recommend keeping a 10% buffer to be on the safe side. If you use Ionity even abroad, you can safely go down to 3%. No problem at all, really. I do prefer Audi charging the e-tron route planner. It's quite nice. Thank you so very much for doing that. This is truly very, very important and also modern. That's how it should be. 
map contents, announcement volume, call notifications, whether they should occur without interrupting, editing the route, then, for example, you can say, okay, delete like a waypoint or something if you don't want it. So they have implemented that quite effectively and quite well, actually, and it seems it's finally on par with what the competitors have been doing. Here we also have a new menu. Looks very nice, I think, even more structured than BMWs, to be honest. It's quite rugged in some parts, isn't it? Well, here for this particular instance, we've observed various vehicles, several different settings. What we find there, let's take another quick look. Here on the display, for instance, what I'm currently on, light. So here you can adjust how the exterior light should behave. Here you can select these graphics, it's very nice. I was fortunate enough to be able to show you this, thankfully. Let us now go back. Service. More. Incline indicator. By the way, you can choose between an air suspension system or the standard frequency-based adaptive one. Honestly, I'd go for the air suspension option. Here, you can program a gate. As a garage opener, I find that quite neat air suspension for trailers. It has air suspension, driving school mode, yada, 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 everything you could possibly want. I wanted to show you the thing about the game, but let's focus instead on seeing what else there actually is around here, because I've discovered a YouTube browser here, which I think is super cool. For loading brakes, about time we had this. Electrifying is what's displayed here. I don't understand at all, why not me? Uh, let's see what the trial results show. None at all. Here, you can click on this, log in, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And then you'll see what's happening here. Yep, that's where the shorts are displayed. The iX2 just isn't working at all, um, but the Renault 5 is. It really packed a punch. So here you're seeing a video. Let's see how quickly it loads too. Let's click on this one so it gets another click from an outsider. Louder once more. A bit of advertising. And you complain about ads. I'd never subject you to such ads. Two, somehow old, making mattress ads somehow. Now, Disco got some free advertising as well, just like that. So keep it going. You can come in here too. Let's see how they set this up. Tip top. Look here, you've also got it on 21, I mean on 4K. Let's see how they set this up. Of course, it's also a matter of connectivity, how much network you have on site. But you can also go big, just look how awesome. Pretty cool, right? It's a bit choppy because of the network connection. You don't have to watch in 4K, but I think that's great. The passenger can too. There's the optional display, so let's continue right here. An optional display where you can do these gimmicks too. You can also turn on YouTube here, you can open the app here. It's awesome for the passenger, but that's optional. If you don't have it, you just have this Audi logo somehow engraved in metal or something. Look, there's also the karaoke feature. Look, just like in the Porsche Taycan, uh, Macan, that's where we saw it, right? When I sang, oh, look, that picture of Dua Lipa, that one. Yeah, looks good. J-Lo is also in the mix. There are ashtrays too, right? And um, so you've got everything you need in the end. You've got um, Spotify as well, right? Where you can listen to tunes by Michael Wendler while on the move. Um, you can, of course, watch YouTube here, play games. You've got BB Racing, Tidal Audible for everyone who loves listening to audiobooks on the go. Awesome. So basically a perfect system, just how I imagine it in 2024. Yes, and what do I say about the rest? It's simply very nicely done. But here, of course, a faux pas was made for many. The good old piano black backdrop. So there it will get scratched. Mercilessly it is now. And then, of course, you'll have a lot of fingerprints. Look at this. As I wipe over it, I've already scratched it, actually. Yes, not even the QZ Carmanic 3 in one interior cleaner helps against scratches unless you never touch it directly, but only use the microfiber cloth with the QZ to do it. Cup holders, nice shutter. Surely they might have easily made that part metallic, couldn't they? Absolutely. Wouldn't you have preferred that, especially as an Audi fan? Generally, the piano, I find the piano beautiful. It's just incredibly sensitive. That's the problem here. Here you have the drive select button. Here you have the hazard lights. And over here, what do we have here? Ah, so this is the phone holder totally hidden, so to speak. So if someone steals your car and your phone is still inside, they'll probably not even find it. So here are two USB-C ports. That's ash beige, I believe, or is it a drink? Something like ash beige. So how does it look here? Also with this lovely material, I think it's nice, not missing the leather here. And there we have some kind of utensil in there, but the glove compartment is also sufficiently large. What's the plastic check here? Here we have a soft material. Thank you. Up front here, you two, take a look here. You didn't use plastic. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Because that's the look I usually have when you use plastic. See? Just like this. 
The large head-up display. I also find the ambient lighting extremely cool, doubling as a warning light for certain functions. Turning on the seat heating system, it illuminates here on the left or right side in a vivid red. And then this whole beautiful illuminated strip that runs all the way through. So I feel extremely comfortable in this car. It's really super, super lovely with this display landscape. Just how I imagined it. Honestly, I must say, you've even been in a Macan. Don't you find it nicer here than in Macan? Because I think you expect more from a Porsche. Yes, and the Porsche, not just that, but it's just too small. It's too cramped in the Porsche. There's this classic tiny screen here, another tiny screen here. So this particular location is indeed far more inviting, modern, significantly larger, powerful, and stylish. It naturally conditions the battery when you select a charging station. I guess by now I don't really have to say that anymore. Nice, it is such a nice operation indeed. What exactly can I do now? Please open the charging port. I work diligently each and every day to support you with a lot more varied tasks, then work harder. It'll probably work out with a software update somehow. Exactly. Not a velour ceiling, but a very rough compact car ceiling. That doesn't really excite me much. But as I said, I do like it. I think the resolution of this display is awesome, don't you? Very nice. Very nice, right? For you for driving, I'd be interested to see how it works while driving. I don't know that the passenger checks if it works with Bluetooth headphones. It's not like the Porsche, because from the driver's position, you can't see it. Here, I see everything completely. So it probably only works this way if you're wearing headphones, saving on expensive costs by exploiting ideal loopholes, such as device load. So when I engage the forward gear, it doesn't shut off yet. We'll need to check that right here at this spot. All right, let's see what the space in the back is like, and then we'll move towards a conclusion. Here, look, there's a blind in the back to pull down, and then you're even more in privacy, and then we'll do the space check. How's the space in the back of the Q6 e-tron for my height? Very nice. I've got loads of space. Can you see that? Well, I don't have a fistful, but it's enough, isn't it? I don't actually need a fistful. I can lounge around here. It's all nice, but sadly, there's a lot of plastic on the B-pillar all the way up here, too. Just like with the iX2, which I was just critiquing in the video that played, wondering why manufacturers can't just apply some felt down here or something. It's like this, you touch it yourself, now you're curious. Plastic. Why? Take a page from the Lotus e-letter, for instance. This, by the way, feels a bit soft, even at the front, but not as soft, and it doesn't look as high quality, this upper edge. So at first glance, it seems like hard plastic. I do have a cameraman here checking it out. He's quite tall, always inquiring about the adjustability of the headrests because I'm not even sure if that's possible here, right? Doesn't seem like it to me, or does it? Somehow it works. Could you adjust it upwards again? Because the taller you are, the further up, you obviously have to move the headrest. Isofix points, very nicely accessible. Not hidden somewhere in the middle, but accessible right here. Here you can slide rails on, and the cool part I didn't mention, Francesco was sitting on it with his delicate figure. Up front, we also have isofix. That means you have three isofix points. So for families like ours, is it considered a fantastic day because you can securely fasten three child seats? I feel comfortable back here, no question. I have to tell you, this upholstery looks cheap. Don't you think? I've asked that many times. You don't find that today. The imitation leather, yes, it really doesn't look good at all, right? Please go ahead and feel it. Oh God, it feels even worse. It feels like a wetsuit for uh, surfing or something. So you either go for the faux leather seats, hoping they're not like that, or the Nappa. But then, many are against it on principle. Then here, the center armrest, also with this material. Two, cup holders. For skiers preferring the extra stability and control of all-wheel drive in snowy landscapes, it's noteworthy that a highly practical, readily accessible ski pass-through feature is right here explicitly designed for easy equipment reach and secure storage. That's good, isn't it? Take a look. This is something many miss in such cars, especially ones with all-wheel drive, skiers, that is. Lovely. So this is also quite the amazing headroom, tip-top. Grab handles at every seat, albeit in the cheapest plastic, but they're there. Nice, isn't it? Um, well, that's all for now, but I've kept something from you. Francesco has recently pointed it out to me. We completely forgot to demonstrate to you how the luggage and such items are handled. Fit perfectly right in here. So kids, pets and all, this is likely the ideal setup you travel with, isn't it? Dad, mom, and perhaps, if possible, the little kid. And of course, a very handy stroller. Now, assuming that you do indeed have a child. And for that specific reason, let me turn this over. Go ahead and please open up the trunk. Then we can carefully put this item in. And meanwhile, I will gladly give you my final conclusion. 
Well, no, I don't believe the Q6 e-tron is arriving too late in the competitive market. They've genuinely pulled it off with admirable finesse in the technology department, with which, as of this particular moment, they are now significantly ahead of all the other German premium vehicle manufacturers in this very competitive category. Because Mercedes doesn't have an 800 volt system, because BMW lacks an 800 volt system as well. So when discussing the aspect of charging speed, you're venturing into an absolutely insane territory, one that only a single car on the market can currently surpass. And that's the Porsche Taycan. Oddly enough, it's not built on the PPE platform, so the new Porsche Taycan, but only marginally. I recharged the Macan at the picturesque Lake Garda. Remember, if you've attentively watched the detailed video, with exactly 43 kilowatt hours in just about 10 minutes. So, if you're driving this car on the highway abroad, quite possible, no idea, with a consumption of 21, 22 kilowatt hours, then you recharge a real 200 kilometers in just 10 minutes. That's quite intense. So, that's quite intense, and it's beyond WLTP. What? The manufacturer always promises, in so and so many minutes, so and so many kilometers, these are the real figures. And that's quite intense. So, in terms of cruising speed and charging average, when you look at it, you won't find a car that's faster than this one right now. Well, there's the Xiaoping G9, which we have tested, but unfortunately, you can't really, for two reasons, a Chinese car, how long has a brand like Xiaoping been around here? Where do you go for service and the driver assistance systems? I mean, that was really hair-raising even for me. Um, and then you have a car that charges about as fast as this one, but many other things unfortunately fall by the wayside because it would be better for the wallet. But I'm telling you, it's honestly better to invest, really, in a German car. With a German service network and, well, decent assistance systems. Though I haven't tried this myself, I generally know it. Yes, now I've packed the suitcases this way, of course. There's no way the stroller is going to fit in here now, but there must be some tricks that my wife would know. Kind of like playing Tetris, how you do it. Do you know how we could still fit the stroller in? I'm not sure if they meant it like, you can fit all that in there. But I honestly really don't think so at all. I mean, for the suitcases, it's absolutely no issue whatsoever. You could, in fact, actually add quite a bunch of stuff here and it would fit in just great. Whatever you might need to take with you, you know, for a child, depending on how small, diapers, who knows, that kind of stuff. You can squeeze something else in there and these aren't exactly small suitcases. But if you also want to take the stroller, then of course that won't work. That won't work in a BMW iX either. After all, it only has, for instance, a 500 liter trunk. You need to know, for instance, what I'm curious about for a quick getaway for the extremely lazy, whether I can fit the stroller in just like that. So talking about going to the zoo, like going to Hellbrunn Zoo or, I don't know, taking a walk somewhere, you could even manage if you here actually remove the blind, I would dare say, that you can fit the stroller in the back. That's why we, for instance, have a van for such things. You just pop it in the back, but I'd almost claim no, just barely not. You can fold it up, then it actually really works well. But for those who are lazy, it ultimately doesn't at all. You can flip it over, of course. I want to show that as well. We typically draw remarkable conclusions during the trunk check. But you'd surely want to see it. A beautiful flat surface. Here, you can really expand nicely. I don't know the exact liter capacity, but as you can see, this is how the rear seat is divided. And here is precisely how it looks. Exactly, that is the one we mean, the Audi Q6 e-tron model. By the way, just in case you happen to miss it, I actually misspoke earlier, the two-ton towing capacity strictly applies to the rear-wheel drive version that follows. With the Quattro, both models can tow 2.4 tons, and that's truly awesome. Back to the good old plastic charade. But you find that everywhere, ultimately, except with the Lotus e letter. Here, you even have this covered in leather. But it's whistling again. Doing 140 on the highway? Well, really, that's exactly the problem there. All right, then, how do you actually like the car? Drop it in the comments and say, based on what I've told you, whether this car is arriving too late. Or if you say, no, it's actually so good, so remarkably good that you can really and truly forgive it. Like a guest you absolutely want at the party, who always arrives late. Now he's just arrived late, and then you say, all right, now he's here. Now it works out for me. I'll let it slide. That's him. Looks fancy, doesn't it? Fancy. And I'd probably go for this one over the Q8, just because it's more modern. Subscribe to the channel. That makes me really happy. It's like a little give and take among us. Then, down in the description box, you'll find the link to IONT. Go check it out. See how much the electricity would cost at your address through IONT. And then you save up to 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And that's it from Ingolstadt with the Q6 e-tron. Bye-bye.